If you learn anything today, the most important thing to learn is that find is your friend. <laughs> find. Because if you have, I will guarantee you, if I put if I put you in there and your parents, I'll guarantee you I can probably find several generations back already without you having to put anything in. So how you do that is you go to family, what this is like the first page when you get on, and you go to find. And then you type in uh, your person's name, any dates you know of, and places. And then you hit find, and voila, a lot of times it comes up. It might be a giant list of people that comes up. It's got that same name. You just have to kind of filter through and see which one you like. When you click it, um, it'll fill in to the next, you know, the next pedigree person up there. And you could have, who knows, back there. I have one line that I found that goes back to Adam. A lot of times, if you get royalty, you can go back to Adam. I have one line. And this is this is just by fixing blue tiles and doing fine, uh, mostly by fixing the blue tiles where there's duplicates and sources to be attached. Um, I went back to Attila the Hun, and then after him, it was written in Chinese and other. So you can really, you know, find your friend. Okay, so then this is where the, the telephone one, the screen comes in. And this is in more, um, as far as like on your phone. <laughs> it's just the little white tree there. And it, this is this right here. Um, find a person. So you're going to hit find a person, and you can find someone by their ID number that I showed you on the pedigree chart. You can find someone by that, or you can find someone by their name and place and date. Or if you only had a name, or you know, you can do it that way. And there's other fun things we're going to do in a few minutes. Okay. Defined is what? <laughs> okay. So when you click on an individual in your pedigree chart, there will be a screen come up called the individual thing. And uh, it shows the person's name, their birth and death, their ID number. Sometimes that, sometimes that ID number comes in really, really handy. Especially if you run across a uh, a person who's a duplicate, and you know that they're the same person, and you notice, I don't know if you were here for the class that um, what's that second lady that was here, or that the second speaker, what was her name? Branch. Branch. That's right. You notice how different those names were. It was the same person. And if you figured out that, oh, that is the same person, like for a long time, I didn't know that Mary and Polly were the same name in old, back, back in the day. So Mary and Polly are interchangeable. Sometimes Mary's, yes, sometimes Mary's were called Polly. I don't know why. But anyway, that we found that out in one of his ancestors. And so then we were able to merge them and straighten things out. So the other thing you're going to find is you can go back to view the tree that he came from. But instead of starting with you, it will it, he will be the central person and he will have his ancestors there. And he will also have his descendants coming down. So as you see the descendants coming down, you, if you see any of those little blue tiles, you can fix them. And they're, they're pretty easy to do. Don't be afraid to do it. You can't break this. Uh, 
A lot of people are worried if they press this button or that button, it's going to explode. It won't. You just, just go ahead and fix what you can fix. And if you did something wrong, you can undo it. And if you really did something wrong, and you don't know how to fix it, you call the help center. And that number is listed on the first page. Okay, and help centers are manned just about 24 seven. Um, if there's no, and, and they're, they're volunteers that man the help center. And so they could be in their house in Australia if you're calling them the way, who knows. But they're all over the world and they're ready, ready to help you. The other thing you're gonna find on this page is about this person. And um, I ran across one not very long ago that I, by fixing blue tiles, I added to my, um, my pedigree. And his, his about thing is like a light little life sketch of him. And it started out talking about um, he was born in Scotland and he became a doctor and he was in this war and came to the United States and he bought George Washington's boyhood home and he was George Washington's mother's doctor and he was best buds with George Washington. So my, my son was like so excited. He says, you mean we own a cherry tree? <laughs> what used to be the cherry tree may be still there. Okay. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Um, so that's in the about, and that's if you find things that, that this is adding to the skeleton too. If you can find some life sketch about that person, put that in the about there. And so people kind of know more than just dates and places. Sources, you can look up the so look at all the sources that's there. There will be censuses, church records, school records, uh, real estate records, all kinds of records that are a good source to prove that that person is a real person. Uh, memories, we talked about memories. Now, um, I have a distant relative that put in a bunch of memories for my rice life. And fantastic pictures. They must have been way more uh, connected with the rices than I was. And so, you know, that kind of thing, you can add your own pictures to memories so that that person could go, oh, there's a picture of this guy, you know. And then ordinances are the LDS thing. Um, we believe that families are eternal. And so we will process our ancestors' names and take them to the temple. And like for couples, they get married for time long eternity. And for children, we bind the children to it. So as far as LDS thing, if you have any more questions about that, it's in the class you can ask. Um, then there's, you can go to all these different other sites that we have connections to, links to, uh, Ancestry, Find My Past, My Heritage, Gener, Gene, Gene Net. <laughs> and filet, and there's more down here. Um, and then on down here, it'll list the spouses and children and the parents and the siblings. So at any time, you can click on anybody and go, go there. So there's a ton of things you can edit from here. So like one of the things I've been noticing in some of the old records is that the sex wasn't chosen, so it's unknown. And so it kind of stops the progression of, of the, Pedigree chart going up or down. Um, now, I will say that back in the day, you pretty much knew that if someone was named Joseph, he was a male. Today, I can't say that for sure. <laughs> but back in those, so, so you can go in there and edit it and make sure he's a male or a female or whatever in England. Um, like any, anywhere between maybe 2010 on up, I wouldn't say you could for sure do that, but um, anyway, so that's that, that's that page. Okay, here are the hints for success. Um, these are the temple ones, although in, in your, uh, if when you go to get into 
family search and you sign on for an account, you can be asked if you're LDS or not, and you can click on it or not. And uh, if you are LDS, they'll ask for the membership number. If not, you uh, just move on and you click that you're not a member, and then you won't have all this temple stuff to worry about. So that's the the little tiles we see as LDS people. But here is everybody sees these tiles record here. So like I said, it could be a duplicate. It could be a source to attach. And research suggestions, like they'll have, I'd say back in the 16, 17, 1800s, you know, if you had 10 children and there was a, a gap of five years in there, they might say, I think you're missing a child. Because usually you have a kid every year or every other year. And so that might be one of them. And then data problems could be many things. It could be um, a data problem could be like um, these standardized places. So if you only put Omaha, you know, that's that's wrong. So you have to have Omaha, Douglas, can you know, Douglas, don't put County on it, just put Douglas, Nebraska, United States. So there could be a problem with the place. And it could be um that the mother was born after the son. So there could be some mix ups. Um, I know that in my, a lot of my English uh generations. Nobody had an imagination about kings. They were all named after queens <laughs> or kings. You know, William, Mary, you know. And so um, those would get mixed up pretty easy. And if you ask for help, if you don't know, you know what to do, go to that helpline. It's very good. Okay. So to attach a record, so here's here's what the Landscape version looks like with the blue tiles, and these these will get your pedigree. If you fix those blue tiles, your pedigree will be extensive. Um, as I've been doing this, I keep finding more and more ancestors. I just found one last week. I I didn't think I had a drip of anything but white blood uh, in my family, but lo and behold. I found back in the 1600s a guy named, I can't remember the first name, it's, it's a lot of vowels in there, but his last name was Powhatan, and he was from the same village Pocahontas was, but several generations later. And um, so I have American Indians in my, in my mind. Yahoo, I got something, something different. Yeah, a, lot, a drop. <laughs> it's a drop. But the cool thing about Calhat, yes? So, a question. When you're adding your, or looking for your female relatives, is it better to list them as in their maiden name or yes. maiden name, surname, or maiden name? Just so, maiden like name. my maiden name is Rice, I would say Renee Rice okay. because that's how I was born. So, that's just think about that. How were they born? And of course, it shows that you got married. And in different cultures, they do different things. Like I mean, we were talking about Swedish people or Danish people or um, Norwegians. You know, they had that patronymic uh, thing where if you were John's son, yeah. you were Johnson. You know, and then it went from there. Oh, I have I have a question. You you okay. talked about the blue tile, and that's where you can make the corrections and all that. But what about the person that put that in there? They put it in wrong. And then someone you're they related come back? to, yeah. Someone you're related to, instead of hitting find, went in there and just put it in. Oh. That's why find is your friend. So um it, that would create a duplicate. And so that might be something we have to fix. But other than that, it's a source. And so a source might pop up and say, well, well of course, this goes with these things. Do you need to explain why you changed, made the change? Yes. Right. It'll say, 
reason for reason for change, and you'll say these are the same. This is the same person. Or if you, it was a duplicate, you know, you'll say it's the same person. If it was a source attached, this this document belongs to you. You know. The more complete that is, the better because. Um, uh, you're fixing something, then somebody comes along and says, "No, that's not right." And fixes it again. Changes the back. And it yeah. Changes the back, and that happens quite a lot. You and can so, lock it, but I will say, mm -hmm. don't lock it. Yeah, no, yeah. Because the other person could be right, and you could be wrong. And uh, you know, all of that stuff, the world will straighten out later. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, in the meantime, we're just trying to do the best we can because if if you had, if you and you and you, you all had the same ancestor and you put in it four times, like Chaucer would put in there like 312 times. Mm -hmm. So um, having duplicates isn't necessarily good. So this is the screen you'll see when you go to attach or fix that blue tie. Okay, so you have Nicholas Hodgen, he's the groom, and you compare that. You see this paper clip? That's what you click to move this over to there. And so it'll be one person. Now he, he's he's really easy to, you know, that and I try to look for like five points of match. Well, you can pick whatever number you want, but I like to look at the question. Like, do the, do the dates match? Well, there's no date, but these two names match. The wife matches. The marriage matches. Uh, and then it shows marriage up here and marriage down here. And, and it's the same thing. I just, you, you click this add and it slides over there. And they'll become one record. And then you attach the record. So that's how you fix a duplicate. And you'll find many of them. That's why what? Fine. You're okay. Okay, so we have more fun. All right. In your phone, well, and in um, Family Search, you can, there's this page that I showed you before. And it's, um, well, let's, let's just go back there. There we go. This page right here. And you can search, you can find, you can, we're going to do this one, relatives around me. So if anybody has family search on your phone, bring up this page and it's in the more section. So see, there's like little, a little hamburger down here, these three little dots. You click that. Or some of them, it's up here, depending on what the phone you've got. So you click on those three dots, and you will click relatives around me, and it will scan for the people in this room to see if I'm related. Is that going I'm going. Oh, I have one. Okay, if you have one, stand up. You Carol? Okay. If they come up, oh, and it more. says not related beneath them. What does that mean? Oh, if they're okay. on the app, but we're not related. That's it. Could be. I don't know. So so, so far, I'm related to Rita, Adam, yeah, and yeah. me, and I'm related to my husband. <laughs> not close though. Not related to you. I'm related to her too. <laughs> okay, Carol Christensen, Anita Seitzinger. Judy Thomas, Amy, 1597, Alice Smith, I'm related to you, Jen, Larry Bird, and it'll tell you, so Amy, I'm related to you, oh, there you go, my 10th cousin, Alice Smith is my 10th cousin, and Carol Christensen is my 10th cousin, awesome, <laughs> My 
fifth person. Did you see it? Okay, so that's that's a fun thing you can do at a party. <laughs> and like I told someone before, it was related. I was really into this big policy for that. I'm like, what? <laughs> and he had he had one Scottish ancestor, and that's where he went like. Mm -hmm. So do you click on the name and find him in your tree or not? Well, they would be listing people, so you know. Yeah. Is it really fun? Okay. Now, let me tell you about another game you can play at any time if you go to a graveyard. I call this the graveyard game. And it's, it's a lot of fun, too. Um, so just for giggles, my husband and I were, were on a little trip and we're going across Kansas, which can be sad and hilarious sometimes. So we decided we needed a leg stretch. I said, well, we're over by Salina somewhere and we, we got out of the car and uh, found a graveyard. We walked around the graveyard and I said, oh, let's go to more. Okay, let's go to more, and then let's go to find a person. So we went to find a person, and we looked for graves that were like like ancestors. So he found a few, I found a few that were names that were in our family. And so we put them in, and then we clicked, um, after we clicked find a person, then when, if they came up, because we, the grave says, you know, you know where they're buried, because uh, you're standing there, you put their name in and their birth and death dates in, and if they pop up, there's a little icon that, I don't have it on here. Um, there's a little icon that says, oh, yes, I do, yes, I do, yes, I do. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Broke it again. Okay, there's a little there's gonna be a little icon that, that says view my relationship. And when you view that relationship, it'll tell you how you are related to that person in the grave. And then what was it just a few days later? They came up in our uh, in our uh, family tree, and we could see how they were, you know, how they fit in and who they were under, and all that stuff. So that's a, that's if you have if you're just like on a trip and you want to do something like this. Okay, I can't do it. Oh, sorry. So how many of you have used family search? Have what? Used family search. Oh. So I'd say about two thirds of you. <coughs> you get two. Oh. Okay. Okay. So either one of those. Okay, so here we are, all about me. Uh, there's fun activities in there that, oh, what happened in 1955 the year you were born? And how, how common is your name? And uh, where does your surname come from? You know, stuff like that. It's, it's just fun. And I am related to the Duke. <laughs> so, um, so I, I'm, I was adopted in 1966, and so this is going to be based off of what my birth certificate reads. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's not going to have, have any information connected to me necessarily about my birth family because my birth certificate doesn't have those people on it. So is that how that would work? Yes. I, in our church, we say if you're adopted, you get bonus points because 
you can either go if you find the biological, uh -huh. you can go that way, yep. or you can switch and go right. your adopted. So you get, but it won't attach the biological line to me because none of the record, none of the, none of the legal sure. records make that connection until you make right. a change. If yeah. you find it, you can definitely okay. add another tree. Okay. Okay, so that's the graveyard game. <clears throat> so you type in, to, you go to the cemetery, you find family names. And by the way, one of the interesting things we saw when we were doing this graveyard game was in the middle were like the Germans. And then a little on the outside of that was English and Irish people. And then on the outside of that was um, the Spanish people. So you know, migration never stops. <laughs> Don't be worried about who's where and, and whatever they are, because migration never stops. If it did, we wouldn't be here. Okay, so so this is how you can see your relationship. So this this is the end person that we wanted, um, and he she was trying to find out how am I related to this person. That's her second cousin. It goes up through. Looks like her father, maternal grandmother, and then whoop, down there that way. So, yeah, and you can look at your relationships very easily. Um, so this is, can't see this because this is, it says get involved, and that's the icon that you would click, or you just do get involved in the PC. There's a place on the tabs that says, that says get involved. And so you can do indexing, you can uh, fix all kinds of, and translate all kinds of, uh, of records. Um, you can fix place names. There's my Valley of Nebraska one. You can contribute. Um, many of the people, well, I'm one, I'm a volunteer, I guess you could say. I go in and contribute. I start with you four generations and work on, work on up. Working on the blue tiles, I will tell you, will get you farther than anything. Um, and adding pictures of your ancestors, that's icing on the cake. And you keep up with descendants. To me, that's the hardest part. We, we sit there, we sat there one night, and oh, we have some of those kids. When were they born? Yeah. You know. Uh, so keeping track of the descendants is uh, kind of a big thing. Okay, and that's it. Do you have any questions? How easy would it be to copy your family tree from ancestry and move it to family tree? It's not that hard. Um, in fact, there's links. There's a link in family search that you can oh, and do that. And like I say, if you have any technical questions like that, call the help line. Okay. I have a question. You know, on the round chart that you had on your the chart, yeah. And if you're missing somebody out there, how do you and you find it? And well, you to, to find that person. Well, to, I found it, and then I want to add it. Oh, easily. Look at the child, or or the, the the ancestor closest to you, and if it's a father and mother visit, you just go into his individual page and edit where the children are. And so you can add, you can add the parents. You can just add the add parents. You can even right click on anybody in a vertical chart or a landscape chart. Um, you can add people straight from there too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us when the uh, church is open? The library out there, or well, is it not open? Here, here's what the deal is. Every since COVID, um, it's been closed. Now, it is available to be uh, used if you call the person in charge of it. What's his name? Uh, Ken Goodell. Ken Goodell. Now, the, the funny thing is, if you go to the library and use their computers, it's the same as if you were doing it. But really, everything is available from the Big Salt Lake Library at home. So, yeah. except the ones that are locked. Or whatever. Yeah, we do have microfilm and fish at the library. Okay. I guess we're curious. Yeah, also at the Family History Center, uh, we can 
he said, make appointments to get into, but they have access to some databases that you can't get from home. So, for instance, if you're interested in Swedish ancestry, you can have other kinds of digital calls about the description costs and use it as a family history center. There's a newspaper dot um, on our anyway, there's a newspaper yeah. index, and there's some other uh, ones that are helpful to say you can only use in the family history center. Yeah. I know that it's yeah. at, at 2400 Kings Row, 2401. Yeah, 2401. Kings Row is yeah. the library has, is a, an affiliate library. So you can get in here, and the Chief uh, People Genealogical Society is also an affiliate. Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, uh, Sharita Camp, who uh, is the head of the genealogy part of it, She's a member of our church and she can help with anything that you need. So, and that's here at the library. Yeah, here at the library. And there is a, a family group display in that big room. Um, and uh, 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 Ken Gidell has tended to be there most of the time. I feel a little awkward giving out his contact information. I mean, I could give it to you specifically, but uh, if anybody wants to, you know, contact him, uh, you know, he can, you know, he can open up the library. Yeah, or, or arrange to have somebody. But I will check and see if you can find it at home. I mean, I've, well, I've come across, the ones I can't get are the ones that are off. Oh. And so you have to go to an affiliate to get in there. And okay. when we have people come in, we need to know if we can tell them that we can go to your library mm -hmm. or, you know, what the, Hours on now. Our class is lower, yeah. that's okay. But go ahead and take a look at everybody's surname. If you can find a cut, so thank you for coming. You've been a great class. I hope you've learned something.